Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Power Attack 10. In this episode 65, I'm going to be looking at a stroked 454 big block build. I've had quite a few requests for a formula that will produce good results, or rather outstanding results, without going overboard on the, on the uh, build costs. And really, what we're looking at here is a stroked 454, not a 502 build. So if you've got a good existing 454 block, we're in business. You could say, to some extent, this is a test of the trick flow heads that I used. Now, I've only used two types of trick flow big block heads, and I really should have mentioned them long ago, right? I've tended to focus on uh, airflow research and uh, a dart, and kind of left trick flow somewhat out in the breeze. Now, the 280, tried that, that's the 280cc port, tried that on a 454 and it was an out-of-the-box build. I think it was in somewhat of a rush so I didn't have time to do photographs and things like this but the results were very good. Um, of course it was cammed to suit the heads and let me see it had a it had to stay in the confines of a fairly close fitting hood so it was it was board 60 over so it's really a 468 um, and it had the intake manifold was the holly one in right. fact i tried the team g and the holly one and they both were pretty much the same and match that one up and put a good carburetor on it and it works very well considering it's a low uh, profile manifold. In this shot you can see the manifold installed and the uh, 1000 CFM uh, 4150 carb we used on it. And this combination proved very streetable. I would say I would prefer that to um, a two-plane manifold. Now here's the problem with the two-plane manifolds. Edelrock do a great manifold. Trouble is there isn't a carb that will fit it that has enough flow. Their intake manifold flows a lot of air and then what happens? You stick a carburetor on there, a 4150 series carburetor, and the best you can do is about a thousand CFM and that's just on the limit. Really, what Edelbrock need to do, please note you guys at Edelbrock, you need to make a two-plane manifold that takes a dominator. Now, a 632-inch build with a dominator on a two-plane would be just an awesome street driver. Pull from low down and make some good top end. But anyway, that's another subject. So, the 454 slash 468 build um, I remember it produced about 1.35 foot pounds per cube which is means that we had the cam pretty well specced out for it and um, uh, and the good news there is that the grind that we used on the 454 is very doable Right now, when you get to a 632 inch engine, if you're going to have a 10.5 to 1 compression plus heads that are kind of normal 24 degree heads, even the best of them, they require uh, a lobe center line angle or a lobe separation angle, call it whatever you will, of somewhere around about 103, 104. Well, guess what? There's no blanks to do that. You have to have a special billet cam made. That's expensive. You can pay $1,000 for a cam like that. Just no problem whatsoever. So, with the uh, 468, with a, uh, a set of 280cc um, port trick flow heads, 
we cranked out about 1.35 foot pounds per cube and about about 625 horsepower totally streetable right now talking of total, totally streetable this is where we're going today I'm going to show you a build and you can see that how streetable it is by the fact it has a 500 rpm idle it'll just sit there and idle at 500 rpm forever and in terms of output it makes 785 horsepower and better yet 722 foot pounds of torque so a really tear tree stumps out of the ground so if you wanted to build a sport truck this has got plenty of low end with a top end charge that's going to upset a lot of guys with corvettes anyway let's start with the, the build first we get a good 454 block bore it 60 over oh i forgot to say terry walters did all the machining on this engine and at first this engine was used to um to test exhaust pipe lengths when i did my um all different length exhaust pipe study uh, and i'll put the video up in this corner here now for this build we used a four and a quarter inch sorry a four and a half inch scat stroker crank uh, i can't remember if they come in a 9000 series but we used the forge one and like i said we used the, the original engine to test um exhaust pipe lengths and how if you've got equal length headers then you've got at least seven of them wrong put in the quarter inch long rods and we used uh pistons from icon icon pistons and um, with the four and a quarter inch sorry the, with the four and a half inch stroke we got 525 cubic inches so it's it makes quite a nice displacement size but here's the thing i suspect that the bore stroke ratio on this engine is fairly optimal that's not to say a 540 wouldn't make more horsepower and torque but it might not be quite as good in terms of foot pounds per cube just a little bit less but the increase in displacement would still pay off so what i'm saying here really is that a 454 60 over with a four and a half inch stroke is a dynamite deal right you will not be disappointed in the performance and the nice thing is if you've got a block already a good 454 block then you're home and dry you do not need to fork out for one of those dark blocks now that it sounds like i'm kind of running it down there no i've used those dark blocks and i love them they are great you wouldn't believe you can abuse them right um with a nitrous motor 2000 horsepower no problem at all none right i'm assuming you're doing it right no you can build a 2000 horsepower nitrous motor for the street right so uh, but we'll get to that now if you're going to use the scat crank and the rods you will need to do some clearancing on the block right now you could if you wanted to get terry walters to build you the 454 rotating assembly plus block right that might be the best way to do it because there is quite a bit of grinding to do and uh, terry's company is uh uh quite familiar with doing these uh, 454s stretched 525 now the cylinder heads on this we didn't use the 280s they're great for a 454 but what we did was we used the trick flow 325 cc port heads now i ported these now i have used them out of the box 
they will make good power. Can't remember any numbers offhand, but that's brain surgery. However, they port up very well and very easy. Now, here's the thing. If you wanted to port some yourself, they're not very difficult to port. And all the principles that I discussed about porting AFR big block heads apply to these heads. In, in essence, they're very, very similar. And by the time you've cut the port, you've actually got ports that are the same in each brand of head. You can get my finished port in either head, right? Not a problem. So we've got good cylinder heads and then we pair that off with a good camshaft. Now our motor with um, uh, 525 inches, good low lift flow on the, on the uh, intake valve, 2.3 intake uh, 1.88 exhaust uh, I'll put the flow figures up uh, when I talk about big block heads down the road but for now best to say that the uh, heads flowed pretty close to 400 CFM at the lift we were using and I think that was about 700 and I think at that we had about 398 on the good port and 390 on the bad port but we had good port velocity good port energy and good low lift flow so the heads were on the money camshaft for this right. with a 10.5 to 1 compression and those heads on 525 cubes with the good low lift flow we had we used 106 lobe center line angle now, I have to tell you, I would like to have used 105, but there was a problem with the blank. So we went with 106, knowing that we were going to be just the tad off optimum. My guess is, is that had we had 105, instead of making 722 foot-pounds of torque, we probably would have made about 728 to 730. So it would have been a bit better. And... I think we would have hit the 790 horsepower as well. Anyway, so there's the camshaft. Um, valve train uh, was uh, PRW's 1.9, rather they say it's 1.8 stainless rockers. Um, they actually come out at 1.92, I think it is. So, uh, Cam wise, we didn't have to use a massive lobe on the cam. Um, some good valve springs. Now we weren't going to turn this engine a lot because it wasn't going to have a big cam in it. We were going to make our horsepower through sheer torque. So that's what was done there. Let's go and see what this comp. Oh, headers two and an eighth. And you're seeing a dyno with the wrong headers on it because that's what you'll all have. This engine would have made 30 horsepower more if we'd have dynoed it with the unequal length headers. So think about this. This engine's being restricted because of the header differences from what you can find out there to what it actually wants. So let's go ahead with the video and see it on the dyno. And there's a couple of things I want you to note. The idle. Right there, that proves that it's a street motor. The big torque number for a 525. Most people don't get that from 550s or, or even bigger. And yeah, in fact, the factory 572s don't make make that. You know, the, the performance uh, 572 big blocks. So I'd like torque of 572, and that should tell you right there. But a highly functional combination. What else? Oh, intake manifold. You may have to use Holly manifold, which is a low one. Now, that works pretty good, but it doesn't have the top end charge that the Darren Morgan designed Sniper Junior. Right, we just port match the Sniper Junior, nothing special, just port match. The carburetor on it was uh, a, an AED dominator, right? 
Dominators and big blocks are a match made in heaven. So, here we go. Dino time. Well, what did you think of that build, right? Did you like the results? You should do. Get to the drag strip there, even if you put that engine in a truck and it's still going to be competitive with a lot of cars, right? Those are real numbers, not fake numbers. Remember I said, I've said in several of my videos, the BS stops when the flag drops. Well, that engine proved itself on the drag strip, so that's uh, points in its favor. Anyway, if you like this video and you want some more like this, be sure to mention it in the comments below and also subscribe, like, share, and notify. And if you want to hit the thanks, the super thanks button, go ahead. We, we are self-funded and no big corporations uh, backing us up. Not like the channels you see from Motor Trend and Car and Driver and all that, right? It comes out of our pockets and what we get from our YouTube payments. So please subscribe and help us finance our shows. We need this because dyno testing is expensive, even when you have your own dyno, right? I've worked out that from wear and tear on the dyno, plus all the stuff you need, you can easily burn through 350 bucks a day. And I can't remember when we've only dyno for a day with all the little things we test and the rigid, uh, deal we have for setup you know it's got to be just right because we could be testing a manufacturer's product we need to absolutely make sure that we test it the best we can so what you do affects what we can do and what we do affects how well you can build your motors subscribe and like and share thank you for watching